I always say that energy is a moving freight train. And it's exactly the words I use because right. people have no idea. Imagine all the life force you have in your loins or all the energy it takes to digest a meal, all the energy it takes to run from Tyrannosaurus Rex. Instead of it being consumed outward, it's moving back up into the brain. This is Dr. Joe Dispenza podcast. And now let's watch his podcast together. In this speech, Dr. Joe Dispenza explains how our thoughts and emotions shape our reality and ultimately affect our health. He argues that most people are stuck in a cycle of negative thinking and emotional reactions, which can lead to stress, disease, and other health problems. However, he also offers a solution. By changing our thoughts and emotions, we can change our energy and our lives. And so when it starts to move and it hits the brain, all that energy, all the guilt, all the pain, all the suffering, all the fear is turning into pure energy and it's, and it's moving back into the brain. And so when that experience happens, A, experience enriches the brain. The end product of experience, B, is called an emotion. So then most people, they wake up in the morning and they start off their day thinking about their problems and those problems are wired as memories in their brain. And those memories are connected to certain people and things at certain times and places. All of a sudden, the moment they do that, their brain is a record of the past or thinking in the past. Those memories create emotions and those emotions then are feedback from past experiences. So the whole entire state of being of a person is in the past. And you say to the person, why are you feeling so bad? Well, I had this event that happened to me 25 years ago or 10 years ago or last week or six months ago. And what that means is they haven't been able to change since that event. So now you have an inner event that's more powerful than the past betrayal or trauma, the past shock. And the energy from that event is capturing all your brain's attention, but it's not coming from your outer world. It's coming from your inner world. And the moment you start feeling that elevator motion, you're paying attention to the pictures in your mind and you're creating a new long-term memory. And we could say that from a biological standpoint, you're rewiring your brain and sending a new emotional signature to your body and your past is literally washed away. Now, we don't perceive things the way they are. We perceive things the way we are. So the moment your brain gets an upscale neurologically and you start feeling differently, you, your spectrum of reality is going to change because you're no longer viewing your future through the lens of the past. And the side effect of that is psychological healing. It's emotional healing. It's people get their hearing back and people get their eyesight back. People get their, their cancer to go away. Their, their, uh, you know, I could go their, all their skin conditions disappear. I could go down the list in one second. In one second, they get a biological upgrade. Uh, if you're not being chased by a predator and it's no longer the coworker who's working next to you, but if you're thinking about your bank account and you're thinking about your enemy and you're feeling hatred and you're feeling fear, and then you're turning on the stress response just by thought alone. And it's a scientific fact that the hormones of stress long-term downregulate genes and create disease. So if your thoughts can turn on the stress response and the stress response pushes the genetic buttons that create disease, then your thoughts can make you sick. So the question is, if your thoughts can make you sick, can your thoughts make you well? So if 95% of those thoughts are unconscious thoughts, then it makes sense then that people could be a good, could be a good person. They could really be really a wonderful person, but they got a program running behind the scenes of their awareness that is signaling the body emotionally. And that program is programming a gene. So then, so then if 70% of the time people live by the hormones of stress, then more than likely and most effects in our life, most things in our life that stress us wind up as emotional or psychological stress, 75 to 90% of every person who work, walks into a healthcare facility, walks into a doctor's office in the Western world because of emotional stress. That's nine out of 10 people or eight out of 10 people. Then you gotta say to a person, man, we have to start addressing our emotional reactions. So, so yeah, and if your immune system is, beat up because of the hormones of stress. And now you're sensitive to everything. You may have food allergies. You may have a, a rheumatoid arthritis. You may have MS. Those are all immune mediated conditions. So then 
diabetes, everything else all of a sudden becomes, comes from lifestyle. So then if your thoughts can make you sick, then it begs the question, can your thoughts make you well? So now it's not enough to just think a positive thought. As I said, if you're feeling really negative, you got to you got to open your heart because if you're, say, you're saying I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, but you're feeling bad, 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 that thought is never going to make it past the brainstem to the body. It's going to stop right there. But if a person all of a sudden starts their day with opening their heart and feeling gratitude and appreciation and kindness and care and love for life, well, and if their body's actually feeling that, their body is the unconscious mind, doesn't know the difference between the experience in their outer world and the experience in the inner world. The body's believing it's in a new out, out, outer environment. So then they'll begin to accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to that emotional state. And they'll begin to program their autonomic nervous system into a different destiny. Well, think about it. The emotional signature of gratitude means something has already happened. You give thanks when you get something, when you receive something. So if you're giving thanks before you're receiving it, your body's believing it's already happened. So then it'll accept the thought of your wealth. It'll accept the thought of your health because it's, it's, it's in alignment with the thought. So then if a person does that enough times and they're walking around in a state of gratitude, then they're going to feel like their future has already happened. And if they feel like their future has already happened, they're less likely to try to force outcomes and control outcomes or try to predict outcomes because they're no longer living in anxiety and fear. They, 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 they know. And so teaching people how to do that and sustain the state with their eyes open is what 2018 is about uh, in, our, in our work. Because if this was easy, everybody would be doing it. This, this goes against generations untold of conditioning to fear and conditioning to lack, to separation, to emptiness, to guilt. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're raised with a very strong conditioning that into limitation. And so, so imagine like uh, the, the thought is the electrical charge. The feeling is the magnetic charge. Change how you think and feel. You change your energy. You change your energy, you change your life. Almost 30 years of doing this, I can tell you nobody changes <laughs> until they, until they change their energy. And so then think. If you're connected to the energy of your future and you're feeling gratitude and you're in that energy and all of a sudden you start feeling fear or anxiety or worry or impatience, you just disconnected from the energy of your future. And now you're back to the energy of your past. You're back on the hamster wheel. So then nothing wrong with that. It happens to me every day. The question is though, are you going to go, oh, I'm too upset to make my way back? Well, no, you're doing the meditations to become so familiar with that energy that you can say, give me a minute. I just need a minute. Close your eyes, bring up that state, change your energy, and you're going against the survival chemicals. That's greatness. And so you go unconscious. We all do. But then you got to make your way back and become conscious again. And, and, and the act of doing that enough times, is, it's unnatural. But if you keep doing what's unnatural over and over again, you'll become supernatural. That's exactly the whole purpose of this. Dr. Dispenza's message is a powerful one, and it offers hope to people who may feel stuck in negative thought patterns or trapped by their emotions. He reminds us that our thoughts and emotions are not fixed, but are rather fluid and changeable. Although it may be challenging to shift our energy and break free from old patterns, the rewards are immense. By changing our energy, we can create a more positive and fulfilling life. We can attract new opportunities, form stronger relationships, and experience greater health and well-being. Moreover, when we change ourselves, we also have the power to positively impact the world around us. Our energy can ripple outwards, inspiring and uplifting others. Dr. Dispenza's work is grounded in both science and spirituality, and he draws on a wide range of research and personal experience to support his message. He is a leading expert in the field of neuroplasticity, which explores how the brain can change and adapt over time. He also incorporates elements of meditation, visualization, and energy work into his teachings, drawing on ancient wisdom traditions, as well as modern scientific discoveries. Ultimately, Dr. Dispenza's message is a call to action for all of us. 
It challenges us to take responsibility for our own energy and to make conscious choices about what we think, feel, and do. By doing so, we can become the architects of our own lives and create a brighter, more positive future for ourselves and for the world.